Sean, fine-tuning elicits passions. Let me give you three different kinds of explanations. One is the theistic explanation, where many would say this indicates, doesn't prove God, but indicates that a God turned all the dials correctly so human beings could evolve. Second says fine-tuning must mean multiple universes, because how else could we have it a selection effect among all the different possibilities? And a third answer is you think there's fine-tuning, but there really isn't. Where do you sit on that tripartite stool? Uh, I think that the theistic explanation, you will not be surprised to hear, for fine-tuning is the worst of the three. Because the, the emotional way of saying it is, imagine looking at one of the images that the Hubble Space Telescope has brought back to us, you know, turned on the universe and they show us hundreds or thousands out of the billions of galaxies out there. And you can, you can really viscerally feel the enormous expanse of the universe and the many other galaxies with billions of stars and who knows how many other planets and so forth. And the theistic explanation is looking at that picture and saying, I know why it's like that. It's so that I could be here. <laughs> and that seems absolutely uh, ridiculous to me. The universe is way too big. In many ways, it's overly fine-tuned for life to exist. In other ways, it's not clear that it is fine-tuned at all. So it's kind of a mess, the theistic approach. The, between the multiverse and the fact that there is no fine-tuning, I'm actually kind of agnostic between those. I think we certainly don't understand the amount of fine-tuning that is actually required for life to exist. So I'm not someone who will absolutely say that there's a whole bunch of fine-tunings that were necessary for life. Um, but I'm also very happy with the uh, idea that there's a multiverse and that there's an environmental selection and that we happen to live in the neighborhood where life is possible. If there were a multiverse that creates uh, all the different possibilities, and uh, if uh, inflation theories create um, m multiple universes within <coughs> our space-time continuum, mm -hmm. uh, wouldn't those two things themselves have to be fine-tuned in order to create the, the situation to allow that to occur so that ultimately there would be the emergence of life? I don't At some think level, there has to be some sort of fine-tuning, I remember. No, I don't think that's true. I think that certainly the hope in eternal inflation is that it just happens a whole bunch of the time. I mean, if you, if you believe that there are the kinds of fields that would start inflation at all, then it seems to be a fact that you don't need to finally tune those, the, the features of those field theories in order to make inflation be eternal, in order to make whole bunches of universes. Uh, I think this is a big misconception that people have about the idea of the multiverse. They think that there are a bunch of physicists that sat in a room and, and were like, you know, dude, it would be awesome if there were like billions and billions of universes, which is nowhere near what really happened. What really happened was people invented other theories for other reasons, string theory, inflation, reasons having nothing to do with the multiverse. Right. And what they found is that these theories predicted the existence of a multiverse. It's not like you had to really work hard to get it. So what's the implication of that for fine-tuning? Well, if you have a multiverse in the sense that there's different parts of the universe where conditions are very, very different, and this happens many, many, many times, so you're basically sampling different ways, different local environments in which the universe could appear, then the chances that one or, or more of them are going to be hospitable to the existence of life are very, very high. So it's not surprising that we're in a part of the universe that allows us to be here. But you said you're ambivalent between that explanation and the explanation that the universe isn't really as fine-tuned as some people think. That's right. Why is that the case? There are certainly features of our universe that seem unnatural to us. That I would not deny at all. The value of the vacuum energy is much smaller than we would naively expect. But there's no problem in thinking that our naive expectations are wrong there and a more a perfectly deterministic physical theory will someday explain that. The parts I'm ambivalent about... But if that were the case, if, if the perfectly deterministic physical theory would explain that, wouldn't that be an odd thing to explain? That if the one theory that it works is, is the one that throws up life, if, if life is a total accident. That's right. So the part that I am ambivalent about is the claim that if the parameters of our universe were very different, life would be impossible. I think it's clearly true that if the parameters of our universe were different, the universe would be a very different place. There's a lot of sensitive dependence on physical parameters in our universe. But if I gave you the actual correct theory of the universe, as far as we understand it now, but you hadn't ever looked at the universe, and I said, could life exist with this theory of physics? I don't think you would get the right answer. I don't think that our ability to reason from a physical theory to the existence of life is at all well established. Right, right. It's, well, what's the implication of that? That just is, is the lack of knowledge right now. The, the implication is that we do not have any idea what fraction of physical theories are hospitable to the existence of life. Therefore, we cannot say how finely tuned our real universe is. Uh, 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 life in general or our life in particular? 
Oh, our life in particular would certainly not exist if the universe were even a little bit different. Right. So, right. but who cares? I mean, if there was another set of physical parameters that allowed a different kind of life to exist, then they would be sitting here having this conversation about us. But there are certain physical parameters that must be the case. You must have uh, particles that can agglomerate together. You must have heat from stars. You, you must have pi pi you, you must have certain kinds of things that, that will allow uh, a, a complexity to emerge for life to occur, the, the, even if it's a different kind of complexity than what we have. I think people tend to mix up some very different aspects. Um, sometimes in the discussions of the fine tunings required for life, they get very, very specific. They say, you know, if it weren't for plate tectonics being exactly like it was on Earth, like, you know, that's just incredibly presumptuous in terms of what life could possibly be. I would say that even talk of stars and planets is incredibly presumptuous. I have no way of knowing that you know life could not exist in the core of a white dwarf or in an interstellar gas cloud or anything like that. What is life? You don't even have the definition of it. If you think about what physical theories allow for complexity, allow for, let's, let's make it very specific, allow for a universal computer, a Turing machine, there's a huge number of physical theories that do that. There's two dimension, one plus one dimensional cellular automata that Stephen Wolfram found that are universal computers. Why couldn't life exist in that? I think that we are way, way too anthropocentric when we talk about the fact that, oh, you know, if this or that feature of our immediately observable environment were any different, we wouldn't be here and therefore life wouldn't be here.